Hey guys, this is Wolfie here, and this is Ruby Six Re Volume <laughs> Ruby Volume Six Revisited, and this is basically me going over what I liked, what I disliked, and stuff that was proven to be both right and wrong, as well as my overall score. And I do want to say this before I go any further: the next two Ruby videos is going to be, in, and the reason why I say two because it's going to be in two parts. The first part is going to be just Volume Seven. Which basically will be taking place in Alice. And the second part is going to be the Alice arc itself. And the latter video is probably going to... I'm going to be ref going into a bit more of the Final Fantasy um, references slash news that show is likely based upon. I do also want to say that this is my opinion and my opinion only. So if you don't like it, tough luck. Don't even watch the video. So one of the biggest things I liked and... This is part of the stuff that I was proven wrong, is that Cinder is alive. I love the fact that they didn't off her like that way back in the end of Volume 5. I loved it because, you know what, the type of ability she has and what she still has to prove, it's going to prove really interesting to not only Salem's faction, but also Team Ruby as well. Now that we know that Salem and Neo are both headed to Atlas. Another major like I did was the whole bit on Ruby, you know, honing her, her her abilities with the silver eyes. And this is through Maria. And I'm going to go over that character in a little bit in a slightly more detail. And the whole hint at the very end of the volume where you see Summer Rose, like a real image of her for the first time in the entire series outside that photograph. So I'm really looking forward to see... More stuff like that going forward. So that's, and then also, I'm, and I'm doing, I, I do have a notebook in my possession. So I may, you may hear the a t page turning here and there. I'm not the world's most organized and I do will be flipping through back and forth through all this stuff. So the whole thing with Salem and, and Oz, the sense of their past being more revealed. I actually liked it because it actually gives <laughs> Team Ruby an idea of how to, finally defeat Salem, even though she's said to be immortal. Yeah, um, I'm going to say this right now. It does The thing is with Salem and the way she, her abilities are, all that stuff, I do say that it is based on the Eastern religion of Buddhism. And I kind of say this because I am a Buddhist myself. Is that the whole thing with um, not so much the reincarnation, but how the soul is set free. How certain things are set free. It's like, if the if the physical body of the of the of of whom the soul is inside, if they finally get everything correct, then it is then when the soul is set free. And again, this is a concept in Buddhism, believe it or not. So, another thing here, I'm like, again, I'm going over my notes here. Why is her the fact she actually stepped it up a bit, mainly helping Ruby out. As well as correcting Blake. And let's see here. I'm going over, like I said, I'm going over some notes, so bear with me. So, another thing here is that Jean, it's like his actions, his words, is showing, it's finally showing us why he was picked to lead Team Juniper from the get go. And that's something really beautiful. And the whole scene with him and what it looks like to be Pure's mother. At the statue of Pure, that was really like, in a sense, you could say that's a bit of a closure for John. And if you think about it like that, and, and the reason why I say that because it looks like John's probably gonna be able to move on and find somebody else to be with. So then, uh, with that all out of the way, I'm gonna go straight into what I disliked. The fact that one the biggest dislike I have about this volume is the fact that there were varying parts of it that were that that I felt were rushed and predictable. And if in main case in main case here, it it is pretty much at the end of the volume itself. Not is not just the whole Blake and Yang versus Adam fight. It's also when Ruby was facing off against the army of Grimm, with the, which included the giant Leviathan Grimm. 
Matt felt, I felt like I knew that like everybody was going to win on Team Ruby. It was just a matter of how and when. I knew it before I even before it even happened. And, and then, it's just, the fact that it felt rushed and predictable, I'm like, I'm like, it could have, I mean, could, part of it could have been prolonged. And also, it could have been, like, less predictable, in my, in my opinion. And the balance, it's like the fact that Volume 6 was a bit more action-oriented, as opposed to drama, it felt, it's like the balance wasn't there, and I felt in some ways Volume 5 was actually better. In this, in this regard, it's sense a balance of like how much, how much fight scenes, or as opposed to like dialogue, or even like the humorous type of um, dialogue. And the whole thing with Blake, it's like the she kind of jumped the gun with Weiss. I want to say it's like early slash midway through the volume where she still assumed that Weiss was still the heiress to the Sneak Dust Company. That one turned me off a little bit because I personally felt that that was a little bit of backtracking. And what made it a little worse was that Yang made the choice to not correct Blake about that. And I'm not so sure if this is because she didn't want to reveal Weiss's past to Blake or for whatever other reason. But it really, I mean, it's just, I really couldn't, I mean, part of me is starting to see that there might be, there could very well be a possibility where the team splits up once again. But it's probably not going to be because of the whole thing with Blake's, the timing of Blake's line there about offering Weiss. Not, even though she doesn't even know that Volume 4 confirmed that Weiss is no longer the heiress of the Sneak Dust Company. And what's sad in me was that the only person that has, that's supporting Weiss on a personal regard is actually Ruby. So this kind of, could this could very well be a sense of a team, the team splitting up for some reason. And by that, it's not going to be Blake leaving the team the third time. It's going to be Weiss leaving the team for the first time. In my opinion, because it's like, again, we're going, we're good. Seven, volume seven is going to be starting out in Alice. I think something's going to, I mean, and this is a, pr a very small preview of the next video for volume seven. Is that I think that at some point very early on in volume seven that we're going to see Weiss being separated from the team. And like I said, I'm going to, the next two videos, I'm going to go over as to some of the hints I caught on a lot. The one big hint that I kind of saw at the very end of volume six. And I'm going to compare it to another of piece of photo I saw. And it's a movie I actually did see, which I'll go into that once I get to that video, but. Again, the whole thing with Blake, the timing of some of Blake's lines, you know, the hurt thing with Hurt and Weiss and Yang not correcting and Ruby's the only one really comforting Weiss. Plus the whole thing a little later on with like Blake needing, needing some space and Oscar initially took that the wrong way. That kind of like, is Blake really screwing things up even though it was unintentional? I mean... I mean, when it comes to character development, you know, Blake really fell off the fell off, in my opinion. Now, some of the stuff that surprised me, um, one of the big things I think is, is with Adam, and you know, the whole thing with you know Yang stabbing him from the back and Blake stabbing him from the front. I mean, the fact is like, and the reason why I say this is surprising here is that. In the last episode of Ruby Rewind, which is on YouTube, it looks like they were talking about, like, opening up the idea of bringing Adam back. And I noticed how Sean, uh, uh, bleh, Carrie Sean Cross, Carrie Sean Cross, man, my bad, Carrie, how he seemed to be open to the idea of bringing Adam back, like, like the way it was with one of the suggestions. It's like, he, he, he survives, but he has no memory. I wouldn't be surprised if they go that route. Me, personally, I would rather him stay dead. But that's just me, personally. And the whole thing with um, Oscar, you know, being more prominent, and like, as an individual character, I kind of like, I'm surprised, you know, it's like, they didn't kill him off. I, I mean, because, you know, the whole thing with every incarnations of Oz, you know, they seemingly die off at some point. And another big surprise, and this is, again, this goes back into 
the whole thing with Ruby and her her honing her um eye, the power with her eyes, is with the um, introduction of Maria Calavera. That I just love. I just love the fact, you know, it took somebody else that wasn't Ruby's mother to really help her out in that regard. And then another surprise was perhaps one of the last lines in the volume with, um, a, I know it was a woman that said, welcome home. And it, I, I pretty much can bank on the fact that it is somebody related to Weiss. And this kind of goes back to what I was saying that, you know, and it being like a sneak peek of like the next video for volume seven that is probably going to be either Winter or Weiss's mother that was, that's been unnamed up to this point. And, I mean, the whole thing now is like, um, another surprise, you know, is the whole thing, the, tr the, um, the post credit scene following the end of Volume 6 with Salem getting even more involved. That's something I kind of predicted. I think we're going to see future volumes seeing Salem getting even more and more involved in her plans personally. And uh, with the whole thing with, uh, with some of the female relative to uh, Weiss, and the whole thing with the relative to Jean, I mean, I think we're probably going to see a little bit more of that in the future volumes, but who knows? But again, some of the stuff I'm saying just now, give us just all sneak peeks of like the whole Atlas arc as well as volume seven. So um, as for the score, I'm going to be completely honest. I have to give this a seven out of ten. And it's just mainly because of the whole thing of, of very parts of volume six being rushed and predictable. Some of it being forced for reasons unknown. And the fact I did, I was doing a little bit of research on the matter before re shooting this video was that people were being drawn off about how certain things were forced out of the gate. And that's something that if, it continues on there. Ruby, as well as other shows that have been doing this whole forcing certain things, it's going to lose viewers and it's, it simply is not, it's going to become the beginning of the end. That's, and that's something that worries me as a consumer. If people force things onto others, and this is, comes from personal experience on the matter, it's certain things will just will not survive. And that's just, just me being honest. I mean, I mean, just the whole thing with it. I mean, yeah. I just really can't get any further than that. I mean, I'm hoping that Volume 7 will make up for what the best ups that Volume 6 did. And I do hope that, you know, Volume 7 does something to get some viewers back. But that's just me. This is Wolfie here, and I'll catch you all on the flip side.